Welcome back, Lovesa, and today I figured we would take a look at one of the most underrated Tau units currently in the Codex, and it is the one, the only, Farsight Team, or as I normally call them, the Farsight Marksman. At least that's what I've always known him as. So the Farsight Marksman and his team of sniper drones is traditionally hanging out with the Pathfinders, up and away, sniping out at enemy characters, and helping guide other units to be more effective on the battlefield. He has a movement characteristic of 6. He is toughness 3 because he's just a measly little fire warrior. He has a 4 plus save, just like all the other fire warriors. He has a wounds characteristic of 4, 1 wound for himself, and then 3 for his sniper drones, but it's all rolled into 1, as we know, because drones don't actually exist anymore. He has a leadership of 7+, plus, not like that will really ever come into effect, and an OC of 3, which isn't too bad for a single model. After that, he's got his very impressive long-shot sniper rifle with heavy and precision, a pistol for some odd reason, and a smattering of other abilities that we'll dive into. So, typically speaking, he is known as the poor man's ghost kill. If you can't afford a ghost kill, either in points or in money, then the Farsight Marksman is the model for you. It's similar to the Ghost Kill, because it has Lone Operative. It has Stealth. But here's where it differs. It is not as tanky. And it has a little bit of a paradox, seeing as it gets to re-roll re attacks against targets that it is guided into. Which makes absolutely no sense in my opinion because he has a marker light, sits back, and seems like more often than not a guy who would be guiding other people. Just my humble opinion. But I digress. So there are three ways that one can truly go about using the Farsight Marksman. The first of which is, as I mentioned, for guiding units. He has a marker light, which makes him pretty good, so that you can ignore cover against units that you are guiding into. He's Lone Operative, which means that he can get some pretty good angles and be held out in the open against enemy targets with, with the ability to stay safe and not be shot clean off the board, unlike your Pathfinders, who have to expose themselves in order to help guide. Afterwards, he can forward deploy. This, coupled with his Lone Operative ability, makes it so that he is very easy to get into position that you want him to be so he can get angles on your opponents early on in the game so that he can get line of sight to what needs to be destroyed. Afterwards, you can use him as the lone operative objective camp slash screener. He can sit on your home objective, wide out in the open, because he has lone op and no one will be able to shoot him. You can put him forward deployed in one of the middle board objectives to get on them early, which makes them that which makes him that much more of a bother and also as he's hanging out in the middle board he can screen out other enemy forward deployer units and he can even screen out opponents in your home deployment zone if you want to just put him hanging out in the back to get nice line of sight views because he has loan off he won't be touched and anyone who wants to deep strike into your home deployment zone he'll be giving a nice 12 inch oh no he'll be giving a nice 9 inch deep strike, deny bubble, unless people have stratagems to get within three inches, and if they do, oh well, he's only 70 points or so. It shouldn't be too bad. But there's the final option, the one that he actually looks the part that he should be playing, and that is the damage dealer to the preferable targets. He is good against infantry, normal, light, and elite if we're looking at the type of infantry that the Space Marines will normally be packing. He is, with his two damage pulse rifle, he will be very good at taking out two wound Marines. And with the AP minus one, he takes them down to a four plus save. And if you're making your opponent try to go 50-50 on saves, you're doing the right thing. And this is the true power of him, killing characters because he has precision. So this is the key aspect of this unit. The main reason why I hope anyone would ever be bringing him. Because in the current age of 40k that we're in, it is the age of characters leading units. 
and this gives a variety of buffs to that unit and also protection to said units. Eldar characters, for example, are good at healing or reviving their wraiths. You know, their little wraith bone constructs they have running around. There's some pretty deadly combinations that you can have with them in buffing. After that, you've got Necron characters that can give Feel No Pains or revive their constructs. After that, you've got Guardsmen that also do Feel No Pains or extra commands to buff up their units as well. Space Marines get a similar buffing in melee or durability, and there are a wide variety of characters that farm command points for armies. So in this age of everyone being a general pain in the neck of a character hiding among squads, this is a perfect time for us to bring snipers out of the woodwork and decimate our enemy's leaders. So it's very simple why he is good for being a character killer. He has three attacks with a sniper rifle. With strength five, armor penetration one, and damage two. It's a pretty good volume for precision, and the armor penetration is nice, not too high, I wish it was more, but it's good. You need some armor penetration, because usually characters are more tanky, and a damage of two, which is great. The max amount of damage you can get off on somebody is six. That can kill most characters. If you get six damage through on anybody, just most all units are gonna, like, that unit will die. That being said, we're not going to be betting that you're going to be batting a thousand or rolling a thousand on everything. You're not going to roll all sixes for everything and it's not going to be perfect. The way you should go about this is to take out more low level characters. We're thinking stuff that's like T3, four plus saves or worse. We're looking at Eldar, Dark Eldar, Guardsmen, Gene Sealers, and even other Tau. Not to mention Sisters would be a good option as well with a three plus our, uh, power armor save and then a four plus invuln back to getting it to be a 50-50 shot. If you really want to try your luck, you can go into Marines, because the Strength 5 still means you wound on 3s against Marines with their Toughness 4, and their 3 plus power armor save goes to a 4 plus, and most Marine characters have a 4 plus invuln already. You will be going up against your typical Space Marines, then your Chaos Marines, and for the typical power armor level T4 guys, your Squats as well. You'll be fairly devastating against them. This all being said, you have to know what to avoid when targeting characters. If their toughness is higher than 5, forget it. You're wounding on 5s, it's not worth fishing for it. Even if they are toughness 5, I wouldn't even advise it. The likelihood of you bringing down a Terminator is pretty slim. And wounding on 4s is a 50-50 chance. You know what I said about the 50-50 chance for your opponent making saves? It's same for you on making wound rolls. I wouldn't test your luck. After that, if they have a 2 plus save, no, don't even try. Having a 3 plus is just too good. That 2 damage is not going to slip through. You'd have to get pretty dang lucky. Or if they're a 3 plus save and you're not being guided by someone with a marker light and they're in cover. So they're just still going to get cover, which means it's still a 3 plus save. The minus 1 AP doesn't do enough. You, like I said, you need to make it at least a 4 up save on your opponent. If it's not a 50% chance of failing, it's not worth taking the shot against him. Also, if the wounds characteristic of the character that you're attacking is greater than four, you need to actually have a shot of killing your enemy. If they're like six or something, you'd have to have everything get through and then fail anything. The likelihood of that is just not happening. Sad as it may be, you need perfect hit, wound, and saving. Rolls failed. It's just not going to happen. Four is a nice sweet spot where you're more likely to knock out the enemy character. So from here, we move on to the rule of three, because these guys seem pretty dang good. They would be most likely able to knock out a lot of enemy characters, at least the low, lower level ones. So should we take three of them? And initially, I would say yes, because this would assure instant death for many a character having three snipers hone in on them and take them out. And it would be pretty good because you have three more lone op guys. That would be a lot of annoyance to deal with. Not to mention there are 9 shots for a potential of 18 damage in total, but no, I wouldn't take 3 of them. 3 of them seems like a bit much, too much of an investment. I would be more likely to put just 2 in, and I would have that be mostly sufficient. You add Pathfinders to guide them, they'll be hitting on 2s more often than not, or 3s if they moved, and re-rolling all their hits. That's a pretty good combination, and the likelihood of you wiping out many a character. I think they're pretty good overall. 
But I came up with a little something fun cooked up at the very end just for you as an idea, something that you guys could potentially try out with your snipers. And this is where I think the Farsight Marksmen very well could come into their own. In the Montcar detachment, I'm thinking an early alpha strike on enemy characters. I know what you're thinking, it would probably be better if we had sustained hits flying around at a come turn three with the Cayune detachment, but the fact of the matter is it's too long. The characters have already been doing their good deeds two full turns untouched. If we're gonna do this right, sniping characters is definitely a Montca detachment style thing. It's an alpha strike kind of thing. So this is where we'd go with it. Or heck, even a crew kind of thing because we'd need uh, to get rid of enemy characters that way. But that's besides the point. I digress. We're sticking with Montca. Early Alpha Strike. So we're going to have the Farsight Marksman parked into a Devilfish Transport because they are infantry and they can be transported. After that, we're going to have a nearby character with the ability to give the scouting 6-inch move to the Devilfish. So the Devilfish will be able to scout 6 inches. You know the Montca Warlord trait I'm thinking of? Yes, you do. Give that to one of the Cadre Fireblades with a Breacher Squad nearby, or heck, even a Crisis Suit Commander. Doesn't matter to me. Give the Devilfish a 6-inch scout, so he's up forward farther. After that, once it comes to your turn, he's going to move again normally. And that's a whole lot of distance that you're traveling there. After he moves, you get to disembark your contents of the transport, your snipers. And when they jump out, that's at least... 16 inches, correct me if I'm wrong, if the Devilfish moves 12, I'm pretty sure it's only 10. That's 16 inches of movement. Bet they're all the way out there. Coupled with that, you got your two Farsight Marksmen. They get another 6 inches of movement. They have to stay within 3 of the Devilfish. That's another 9 inches of movement. You shove them up even farther. How far are we talking right about now? This is what? Like, uh, 6 plus 10, 16 plus 9... That's 25 inches, 25 inches of movement at the start of the game with your Farsight Marksman getting thrown way the heck far up, all to get within range of a character. Because what happens is you will spend the CP on combat debarkation, which allows you to reroll all wound rolls. Then you guide with the Pathfinders and magic happens. You've got six shots coming from these two guys with full rerolls to hit and full rerolls to wound. If you're doing the correct target priority, you're hitting them on threes and re-rolling and wounding them on threes and re-rolling. The likelihood of you getting them all is pretty, pretty high. I would say more often than not, you'll get about five saves on your opponent. And your opponent will have to make a four plus save or worse with the armor penetration, assuming you're doing correct target priority. They're most likely going to fail half of those saves. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say they make three and fail only two. That's four wounds going through. Their character is dead. It kills basically any infantry character in the game. That is absolutely crushing and pretty dang deadly for an alpha strike. You're thinking like, yeah, I'm going to wipe out a big swath of my enemy's army. I'm thinking no, because this will make it so that your opponent won't be getting that feel no pain that that character offered to that big unit anymore. They won't get that CP regeneration that they thought they would at the start of every turn. They won't be getting any more reviving or bringing back of any models in the unit of the character that you just destroyed. They will not be getting any extra mobility. They will not be getting any extra lethality. This could potentially take out a Cold Star Commander, if you think about it. It's the truth of the matter. Losing a Cold Star is a big hit to a Tau army. In the realm of mobility and lethality, we can cause that kind of damage to any other army. So doing this will greatly neuter our opponents. But anyways, that's just my thoughts on the matter. I figured it would be a fun little combination to throw out for you to try and experiment with and let me know how it goes or how you run your Farsight Marksman. If you're not really out there to run them up and have them gun down your opponents, but instead have them sit back and screen out enemies and just be a general pesky threat to many a character using their precision. So let me know what you think and how you use them and I'd like to thank my patrons. Tim Steffens, The New Vivek, Sam Jur, Ryan Hall, thank you Ryan Hall for suggesting this video by the way, David Pililio, K Mag, Jonathan Patino, Chris F. Mark, 
Magnus the Roadie, and created by Philip. Thank you all very much for supporting and keeping the lights on at this channel. I appreciate it very much, and I hope your day goes for the greater good.